What's up, ladies ladies and gentlemen? Today, for the fourth episode yeah, yeah, yeah. of Rhinos and Aliens Impressions, we are here to talk about what? The Rock No Rock. Yes, and this is our fourth movie review, you could say. We're not really giving, quote unquote, a review, but we want to give our impressions. We just saw the film, and we're feeling... I'm feeling very good. I thought it was much better than I was expecting. I mean, as you can see, I'm doing a new hairstyle. So. Oh, are you doing this because of the villain? Yeah, you know. Okay, okay. The villain, she was she was all sexy. Hella. Hella. So so yeah, we get the names know. correct. She was the goddess of death. Yes. Mm. And she played that. Yo, by the way, Kate Blanchett is the actress who played Hella. And Kate Blanchett. She is beautiful for the type of woman she is. If you know what I mean by that, there's there's dozens and dozens of different types of women. And whatever type you think she is, she just... like When I think of uh, Kate Blanchett, I think of this 30s, 40s type of woman. She just has that m- mature, last century look. You, you know what yeah. I mean, bro? Yeah. But this film, holy crap. It was... When she was walking, guys, you see them hips moving side Yo, to side. Yo, and she like, was a badass. Ooh, girl. All right. Come, you going to walk towards me like that? Come <clears throat> on over. It was like that, bro. It yes. Like that, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, I will say this. I've never liked Kate Blanchett from a physical appearance. I've always respected it. But, man, this, this film was like... Mm. I prefer her emo, you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, dang, girl. Okay, but to, to get back to on topic, today for the fourth video of Rhinos and Aliens um, Impressions, we are here to discuss our thoughts and opinions about the third Thor film and the MCU, and we're going to go through a list of things, and then we're going to end it with a summary, but to start off... This was a stacked cast. It feels like every Marvel film now is a stacked cast. But to um, we have reoccurring. Yes, yes. I'm so excited to talk about this film. I almost forgot, but thank you because he is the pro. He is the master. <laughs> like always, the one talking right now is none other than Francis Mondrala. But as Danio, for some reason, came up with the nickname. <laughs> His name is White Luxurious. <laughs> Uh huh. And to my right, the guy who created the nickname, the Don Dada of all Dons. Hello. But today, call me Dark Central. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. You see this? Okay, guys. Okay. I gotta have a. Uh, I gotta have a dark name today. Ooh. A sexy. Email. <laughs> Oh God! Mm-hmm. I've been doing pretty good on my cough, but that just that. I, <laughs> okay, so, 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 yes, this is who you're listening to. It's just a two man show yet again. There's a lot of crap going on, but we're keeping it positive. We'll talk about that on the next video we we record, which we're recording tomorrow. We're going to do a sports show, so see you guys for that. But we want to get to the cast, and we have, of course, Thor, obviously played by Chris Hemsworth. We have Loki coming back by Tom Hiddleston. And then we have um, Idris Alba and we have Mark Ruffalo who's playing the Hulk Bruce Banner. And then of course in his cameo somewhat appearance, we have the great and famous Anthony Hopkins who's come who came back to play Odin, right? Yeah. He play he has like a weird name. Like I mean not a name but like a weird presence. Yeah. Yeah, it's Okay, I, we, I, I've never read any of the Thor comics, so I didn't know any of this backstory whatsoever. I just knew of this comic, specifically Ragnarok, because this is the defining moment in Thor's storyline. Yeah. But it was, they, they, all, they all did their job, and I think th- this is the best performance all of them have done for their jobs. Even, um, <coughs> even Mark Ruffalo playing the Hulk, this is the most clueless he's been. Not most clueless, but... For him, for Mark Ruffalo. Not the most clueless Hulk, but the most clueless Mark Ruffalo. Because, you know, the previous films, he's been in control. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But this one, he was... I'll say he was more in control of Hulk. Was he? Yeah. Think about it. He was able to... Like, all the other ones he was talking, but this one, he was making sentences. Okay, but was that that Bruce Banner, or was that the Hulk talking? 
Well, in the like in the comics and TV show, like with them changing <coughs> so much, of course, like the brains like merge. Yeah. And then like um from what I've been know from what I know, Bruce Banner when he changes into the Hulk like at a certain amount of time, of course he had to stay as Hulk. And then when he became like staying as Hulk, <coughs> he like learned how to talk. Okay. So then what was that what was that statement saying? I was saying that like Bruce <coughs> kind of like got a little bit more control of Hulk. How about this? They're now besides when he fell out that play airplane though, because uh, <laughs> that was horrendous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That we man hit that ground hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, you guys, you guys see the film and come back to us about how you feel about that. I I understand where Daniel's coming from. I w- I just say there's a part of the film where. Maybe he wasn't in control, but after that, that's when they become one. Okay, I guess, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just because, don't forget, he was on that planet for for over a year. Which doesn't make sense. No, because you remember how they said... Um, Where did he, like, how did he end up on that planet? That's my question. See, I don't know, because there's no way that, that crappy spaceship is getting to wherever... Because it's not like they have the spaceships that they have on... What's the planet of Thor? A- Asgard? Asgard. Asgard, yeah. So, Because those spaceships are completely different from Earth yeah. spaceships. So yeah. there's no way. But that's the open question, so... Yeah, like, w- supposedly he was on there for, like, two years. Yeah, but it was really... But then, bro, that doesn't make sense because... That's what I'm saying. Because I mean, yeah, he wasn't on Civil War. He wasn't on Civil War, but he was on, like, The Last Avengers. But that was two years ago. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, it just hit me. You know what doesn't make sense about that? The time on that planet goes by much slower. Unless he was talking about two Earth, years... Unless he's saying Earth time. If he yeah. says Earth time, then, yeah, that's accurate. Okay, well... But then my question is, how did you end up there once again? Because if, if Thor ends up there from going through the, the little beam like they usually do to get back to Asgard and yeah. kicks off of that, yeah. how did he, how did Hulk end up there? Yeah, because they, they emphasize you can only end up there going through some type of black hole or something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so that's clueless. I don't know. Which we're, I'm gonna get, we're going to get to that for like the story section, but we, uh, we just wanted to finish... Um, the new cast, as we previously previously mentioned, is Kate Blanchett. She killed it as Hella. And by the way, we were just, we were just mesmerized and amazed at the same time by who, bro? Tessa Thompson. Thompson. I was about to say Jefferson. <laughs> I don't know why. Yes, she played Valkyrie. She and was also in Creed, guys. She yes. was the girlfriend. Ugh. I got shout her out. She, first appearance, Veronica uh, Mars. Thank, thank you, Veronica Mars. You put her on the map, but yes, you did, and I love you for it. I love Yo, you, bro. Isn't she awesome? Her. Cause she, it's not that she's the natural beautiful, but she is beautiful. If you know yes. what I mean, mm. it's just and yo, know, the best part too, she has that. I felt like she was a, a somewhat drunken badass too. You know, yeah, and it I'm was there. just yeah. So so shout out to the cast, Idris Elba. He he has that freaking the masculine yeah. presence like always. Uh, Jeff Gope. Oh, we almost forgot Jeff Goldblum. He was he was some, Jeff. He was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, and so some goofy guy like always. <laughs> yeah, he was playing the Grand Master. So he's the, the ruler of some planet. Yes, the planet of where Hawk went. That we're, yes. which we was just talking. Which about. Which is based off of the comic Planet Hawk. Which, yep. which yeah. is off of that. So uh, from a character and wait, ca- so are they? They should do that then. Bro, this is this Filling is not two years expand. You know what I'm saying. I agree, but this is the Planet Hawk because Universal owns Aww. Hawk movie distribution. So they suck. Yep, yep. <coughs> so from a cast and character perspective, yo, ten out of ten. We had everything was just spot on. Now to get to the plot. Oh wait, real quick. Okay. Yeah. I also heard um, it's a blooper or whatever. How do you say it? Delete a scene. Not a not a deleted scene, but like something that you don't really notice throughout the movie, like when you're watching it. Easter egg? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's an Easter egg in a movie where they uh, a statue is actually shown and it's Billy Ray. 
um, you know who Billy Ray is, right? They're like he's like the animal version of Thor. Yeah, and he's like another person who can pick up the hammer. Where I, I'm assuming it was on Asgard. Asgard. I don't know if it's Asgard or the other planet. I think it's on the other planet. Hmm. But I heard it was a statue of him. Could they have been talking about one of the faces? Because you know how they kept showing that one building with the five faces, and like the fifth face was the face oh, of the Hulk. It probably was that. It probably was. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because he might was. be a champion then. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I got. We gotta watch this again. Which, yeah. Okay, let's put it down. Hands down, the best Thor film. Yeah, my, my favorite. And from here on out, we're going to get into spoilers. So, so just so you guys know. Sorry. Plot. <laughs> the plot of the film, it, it starts off... Uh, from start to finish, this is a comedic film. So from beginning to end, it's cracking jokes. And I would also say from beginning to end, it's pretty much action too. Yeah, it definitely is. Because <clears throat> you start off on this planet where he's fighting some devil demon he's like a fire demon yes we don't know the name so any marvel fanatic will correct us on that but he kills them and this guy warns thor of ragnarok so i will destroy asgard (coughs) yes because he's the one who has the helmet or the skull whatever they go by and thor comes to collect that and he believes this is going to stop ragnarok when in in essence this is what's really going to cause it and then this is when he goes back to, to you say it, because I keep butchering the name of the planet. Asgard? Yes, yes. They go back, and then this is where they kind of connect the dots between Thor 2 and this film, mm-hmm. because at the end of Thor 2, th- there's this scene where Loki fucks up the father, and then he takes his place. And you can notice that, that, uh, that Odin is not back in power because there's all these first off there's a statue of loki now yeah, so obviously that was uh, the big like whoa what's going on here yes <laughs> yes and then that's a big hiccup i should say and then he's watching a play where where thor is showing all this love to loki so all the signs are there this is obviously not the true father this is loki in his place and the entire time there's comedic effect thor comes in more comedy and then they also is like, why are you, why is Odin here watching a play? Wow. <laughs> There's <laughs> well, all this- I guess like a whole bunch of drama was going on in other dimensions. Yes. And you know, he's like the, the ruler of all the dimensions or something like that. He's like the, the peacekeeper, I should of say. Of the nine realms, at yeah, least. The yes. the peacekeeper. Yes. And he wasn't doing anything. So that made it obvious that wasn't, that he wasn't uh, Odin. So. And yeah. then he, in, in order to get the proof out that he wasn't Odin to show the people that he wasn't Odin. Yeah, he threw the hammer. He threw, <laughs> throws the hammer and he's like, well, you know, the hammer comes back no matter what's in its place. So he puts his hand behind Loki's head. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, uh, no, like I said, he's, he's like, palming it. Yeah. yeah. And then the hammer is slow, like fast coming back. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. And then he changes back, you know, and then. Boom, Loki. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. And then this is where they go to planet Earth, and this is where they connect the dots with Doctor Strange. Because if you stayed for one of the end credits of Doctor Strange, he meets up with Thor where he's sipping... Sipping some tea. Yeah, and, and Thor's si- um, sipping a big jug of... Jug. A mug. Yeah, a mug. A mug of beer. And that's actually not the beginning of where they meet. There's actually... Uh, that entire um, sequence was hilarious. Yeah. He just kept teleporting. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He <laughs> um, he was teleporting, um, messing with Loki and Thor. And then, and then at the end, when Thor leaves, there's this funny scene with the hammer. And you hear... You don't see... You just see those two. But the hammer is going around the building. You remember it's knocking stuff down? Yeah. So that was good. He's like, yeah, sorry about this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was for, <coughs> funny. The epic part though was when they changed back when it was about to fight uh, Hella. Oh yeah, they that went part from was epic. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that part was pretty epic. What? Oh, and then a lightning. That was up. That was actually pretty epic. And that's where that's the big scene where Thor's hammer is actually an umbrella. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that was funny. But yo, in the comics, does his hammer actually get like destroyed? 
because I never knew. If, I don't in the comics. I don't know if it gets destroyed. Okay, that I don't know. Well, in this film, it does get destroyed, and that it adds into the plot too, without even knowing it. But yeah. that that scene does two things. First and foremost, it, it's a a what the fuck to Thor, but at the same time, it emphasizes you how don't need it to be who you who you are. Yes, basically. yes. And and in that moment, too, you're saying, "Holy shit, who the fuck is this Hella?" She yeah. just she she not only stopped. Thor's hammer. She destroyed it like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. Wow, she's looking badass and, and sexy as hell, like always. Yeah, but. and then she like does this thing where her hair is down, but she like flicks it back and it gets all spiky, like into a helmet. Yeah, it looks. It was it's like that's cool. her war mode, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. her attack mode, basically. It was pretty dope. It's like she talked blah 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 blah, and then the spikes come out. Yeah, <laughs> so I would say like the first third. The first third of the film is connecting the dots between Thor 2, Doctor Strange, and this film, and then setting up what's going to be. And then the next two thirds of the film is Planet Hulk, and then the major fight scene between Hela and the new crew. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, there's so much to talk about in this film. There, it's not realistic to get in one review. Just. Just know the the second act is where you get introduced to Hulk. There's a lot of funny scenes. The, like we said earlier, this entire film is was, comedy. Yeah. So if you like stuff like that, comedy, yes. like comic superhero movies and yeah. stuff. Yeah, comedic relief and stuff like that. Yeah, I would definitely say go see this movie. I mean, I didn't expect it, but it was all, it was all okay. Yeah, with it, so. Which we're, I, I want to, I do want to address at the end of the film. But first, how did you feel about the visuals? Um, like of the movie? Yeah, like yeah, both from like in terms of the scenery and as well as like the special effects and CGI. Well, scenery was really good to me. I believe uh, oh, like yeah. everything was like, even, it was pretty good. I think the scenes was perfect too. Yeah, me. the art. The, the art of the, it, the colors that popped oh out. Oh my, yo, f- this is a film, if if you guys get a 4K TV and. Oh yeah. You'll definitely be surprised. <coughs> definitely. Yeah, it's it just it, it it went together perfect. Like Planet Hawk, that whatever that planet is, it it looked like a rainbow because the, from the people to the city, there's one ship is literally rainbow colors. So that yeah. right there, it's it's beautiful. Special effects, uh it's I don't really remember it, like a lot of special effects. The only part I remember, of course, is Thor's thunder. That's pretty dope all the time. Well, don't forget about that CGI wolf, bro. That that wolf was dope. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Okay, okay. Besides the one scene, besides the one scene when okay. she was like standing on it or standing next to it, and it was like sitting behind her. But that's that's what I was about to say. When that dog that was, was in scene with other humans, it looked so fake. Yeah, it definitely did. But the design of it was, was nasty. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. <laughs> but um, yeah, the. The if you can tell good CGI versus bad CGI, there's you could tell when they're on some green screen. There's moments like that. If you can't, you won't notice anything. But for the most part, it was amazing. The entire city of um, Asgard and this new planet is absolutely stunning. It's just it's incredible how far we've come in just ten, fifteen years, bro. Yeah, definitely. It's just amazing, but. So, so the characters, two thumbs up. The plot, the plot. To <coughs> they're not really exactly going with the camp, the comic. But other see, than that, it see, was this is good. this is where I want to talk about the comedy because going into this film, that's going to what you're expecting is going to determine, or what you want is going to determine how much you enjoy this film, in my opinion. Yeah. Because if you're one of the people that go to these MCU films just to have a good time, then I think this is going to be top three. Yeah. For for most fun times, and as me and Danielle and we actually went with Damon, we were all talking about besides maybe Guardians of the Galaxy, maybe Spider Man. Yeah. This was hands down the funniest from beginning to end, and this is easily the most comedy in one film yeah because superheroes yeah yeah so so that's where we're coming from with that the plot i do want to say 
I was disappointed just because I never felt any danger at any point. I never felt any fear. And from what I've heard of the comic and what I think of when I hear that word Ragnarok, which is the end of all things or specifically the end of Asgard, I just felt there should have at least been one serious or intimidating moment. Yeah, definitely. Even towards the end, it wasn't. No, you never felt... And and by the way, I, I don't want to take this away from um, Hela because her she, character alone was intimidating. Yeah. It's just... when so Even it, with her, she still had her comedic parts. Yes. Even with her. But bro, like... You, <clears throat> you remember how we were talking about like the score? The score was never bombastic or it never had that haunting sound. Yeah. But as we were talking about, the entire film is colorful. Like there's one flashback scene, which is technically the most serious part of the film, which is when like it's a flashback about Val Curry and why she left Asgard and stuff. But even that is is it never felt like, for example, Civil War. Civil War might have been the most lighthearted Captain America film, but it still had two obvious serious moments. Like, the most obvious was the ending with Iron Man and Captain America. But with yeah. this film, as he mentioned, even the end of the film with the fight scene, it never felt... So, so we're just trying to let you guys know, if you were expecting something more serious, if you were expecting this to be the most serious film then do, just get that out of the way because that you will be disappointed. But in terms of what they were trying to deliver with comedic relief and just a full-on video game adventure, this is top-notch. Definitely. You have anything else to say, bro? Um, other than that? Uh, oh, this is dude. is rock dude. He's amazing. Oh, yes. <laughs> His oh, yo. name is like Cork or... Korg. I think it's Korg. Yeah, Korg. He's the funniest guy in that movie. <laughs> what? The whole time. Like, you look at this huge, beefy rock dude, and he's like, oh, he's about to have a crazy voice, crazy deep voice, and come to find out he has the lightest voice. <laughs> and his jokes is just, like, funny as heck. Like, <coughs> all of them. Yeah, Korg. Korg. Korg? Yeah. yeah like, and what Daniel is referring to is that they do a slow shot pan coming up to him, and... It's like, yo, he's made of rocks. He looks like seven feet tall. And it's like, yo, you're, you're expecting this. This intimidating yes. guy. And then all of a sudden, he's like, hey, my name is Cork. <laughs> 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 he's like some British accent guy. And, he, and as, as we just found out, too, he's actually voiced by the director, which makes it even funnier because you would think it would have been a professional voice actor who did this because the delivery is just perfect. He He's... This film is funny, if not straight up hilarious, and he was the best part. Yeah, or the funniest a, part, right? He's a director, like, yes, <laughs> that's hilarious. That, that was funny. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, my name is Cork, <laughs> and this right here is scissors." <laughs> he said, "You don't have to worry about him though, unless you're paper." <laughs> and then it made funny. It was funnier because it's like rock. Paper, scissors. Yes, it yes. was like, wow. <laughs> Do you remember the ending, too, with his dead buddy? Do you remember those lines? Because if you could say those lines, that... that oh, I can't remember. Oh, it. man, bro. All I remember was him saying, he was like, oh, I kind of like crushed him or something like that. He's yeah. like, and I felt bad, but, you know, so I'm like carrying him around. And then the dude wakes up. He's like, oh, he's woke. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he's nailing... <laughs> That joke was funny. He's like, oh, I guess he was just asleep, taking a nap. <laughs> the, the best way to describe him is that he was the alien rock version of Spider-Man's best friend in Homecoming. If, if you were a fan of that character, you will absolutely love this character. He was a better, funnier, and not as annoying version. Yeah. So, it's just, the more and more I think about it, Take away your expectations. You just go into this film. You have, you've you never seen the trailers. You don't know j anything about the comic book. I find it hard. You will come out disliking this film. Yeah, the, the movie in general is just pretty Yes. Good. Now, th this is the thing because there's been three MCU films this year. Me and Daniel and some of our group, we are somewhat getting worried about them going so hard on the comedy 
I understand they're trying to distance themselves because now MCU is known for the comedy, but I really hope. I really hope Black Panther isn't as as comic as this. From the trailers, gonna it's be, that's yeah. gonna be a disappointment. Which this is going to be a perfect um, yin and yang, you know, because this is what we consider the most funny um, MCU film, and yeah. I mean, Black Panther is setting up to where it's, it's going like to compete with nothing, the yeah, yeah. It's like so, nothing but serious, yeah, a serious tone. So that if that is true, if Black Panther does end up being the the new Winter Soldier, then this is that that's going to make this film look that much better in a sense yeah. too. So. I mean, don't get me wrong. A, a couple comic scenes is pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but don't make it as funny as Thor was. Yeah. Or make it as comic, I should say. Yeah. The, the thing. Yeah. It just. You guys, let us know how did you feel about the film. Okay. Before we go into that, what would you rate it? Uh. Eight point. Oh, okay. I, I, I eight point eight. Well, I guess we're switching spots because I gave. What did I give? Um, uh, what was it? I think a nine. What Blade Runner? No, no, no. I was going to say I gave Blade Runner a nine, but uh, uh, Happy Death Day. You remember how you gave it a solid eight or something, or a solid nine, and then I gave it a solid eight point six nine or something yeah, like that. Okay, yeah. We're su- we're switching spots today. I'm going to give it a solid nine because and. And if you guys have known me long enough, as you guys will get to know me, I'm really not a fan. I prefer DC over Marvel, and I definitely do not like comedy in my superhero films. Like this, right? I, but, yo, screw it. I'm giving it a nine, bro. Two thumbs up. Bow. Highly recommend this. Highly re- recommend this. And, yeah. So, okay. Let, when you guys see this, let us know. Give us some feedback. How how do you feel about it? Because by the way, when when we're talking about the comedy, we loved it. As we said, we gave it both over eight and halves. But we're just saying, Marvel, could you cool it down just a tad, just, just a little yeah. bit, yeah, just be- a tad. Because when when you think about it, three three superhero films and they could all qualify as comedies. It's like, God, what? Yeah, you can't have Deadpool, then have <coughs> Thor. Wait, wait, Deadpool is Fox though. Remember, bro. He's still Marvel, though. Well, I was talking about MCU specifically. Oh. So I'm just saying just this year, you, we've had Guardians, we've had Homecoming, and we've had this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. So. Wow. Okay. So, guys, let us know. And we, we <coughs> when it comes to stuff like this, we would love to hear the feedback. We would love to talk because this is, when, entertainment more than anything is opinions because depending what who you are as a person, what you like, you know. So let us know, and we hope to see you guys for the next time. Uh, we, we're not sure if we're going to do one next week, but the week after, we're all in on Justice League. So oh, yeah. you better be prepared for that. So It's going to be a little bit longer than I expected. I'm pretty sure. Yo, bro, it's actually going to be short. For real? Yeah, only two hours. No, I'm talking about the impressions. <gasps> Oh yeah, the impressions might be longer than expected. Oh yes, bro. Well, technically, this was pretty longer than expected too. So yeah. So we're sorry about that, guys. Yeah, we we just have a passion for superhero films, and and like we said at the beginning, we were surprised by we were expecting a good film, but we weren't expecting this amazing film. So we definitely recommend it. But as Daniel likes to always say, subscribe, like, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Give us a thumbs down. And if you do give us a thumbs down, please comment why. If yeah. not, then, you know, it's okay. <laughs> but other than that, if you guys want to talk to us individually or as a group, we have both of them is also in the description. Yep. Just click that description that's on, I'm pretty sure, on the right side of that little box area. <laughs> yeah. But other than that. Well, depending on where they're viewing this, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Description. Yeah. Just find description and then click on it. <laughs> but other than that, we are all on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are working on other most social media sites. Yes. So just give us a chance to, you know, we have out. we we do have we're slowly coming into Twitch and we're just not saying that we actually have some things set up. So Yeah, we're we're working with other stuff. But yeah. uh other than that, guys, please give us comments like he said. Uh talk about Anything that yeah. you like, see as long as it's respectful and yeah, yeah. and like, but yeah, 
you know, guys, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and also share. Yeah, yeah. So, Daniel, thank you, bro. It's been a pleasure. My man. We need to start seeing more films like this because we will um, put out the reviews or impressions, right? So, see you guys whenever, but watch out for the Justice League. And if we don't do a review on uh, the Orient murder on the Orient Express, go see that because that cast is stacked as well. So, peace out, everybody. Peace. So, if you want to subscribe... Just hit this bad boy up here, that big fat rhino. If you want the newest video, to the right. If you want the recommended, to the left. And then, of course, our personal dick, dick pic. Yep, right below. So thank you for joining us once again, and we hope to see you next week. So peace out. Peace.